The Story of Me is brought to you by Layuna Ontario Provincial District Council. Layuna, feel the power. Visionary, trailblazer, mentor. Today's guest is truly a multifaceted individual whose legacy surpasses all expectations. It is a pleasure to welcome Zulema de Souza. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Very good. Very good of you to be here with me to share your remarkable life. Thank you very much. You were born in Goa, then Portuguese colony right. in India. So your, your first um, language was Portuguese. Yeah. Wow. How was, how was uh, life then? Can you remember in Goa? Yes. Actually, I was born in Goa. My father was working for the British administration, as they call it. That's right. And I was born when Dad was on holidays. The family was on holidays. Oh. So what happened, what, 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 used to, what used to happen there, every five years, people who worked from overseas, they could go back to their place of origin. Yes. For about six, nine months. Ah. And that is how, when my dad and mom were on holidays, they had for, I was born there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, your father going back and forth. Yes. Uh, actually, till age three, yes. uh, you went back and forth between Africa and Goa. Yes. Where in Africa? Later on. My parents were in Africa. I was born in yeah. Goa. And went with them after about six months. But or where so. in Africa? In what, Uganda. How was it dealing with these two cultures, which were quite different, weren't they? We spoke Portuguese yeah. at home. Yes. Then we came back to India, where I spoke Konkani, because we had oh, a yeah. large house, plantations, and. We, we had people living on our properties, meaning yeah. it was a system when you had the landlord and people who worked on your plantations, yeah. helped you at home, uh -huh. and it was quite a different life when you look at I'm quite sure. What kind of kid were you? What was your personality like? Oh, yeah, if you ask some of my friends who are still my dad's friend, yeah. especially this one, Lamberto Gomes, uh -huh. and he's from Kandoli, yeah. from Goa. And he, they had a number of people working, and they had, a, they had a house right on the seashore. Like They had sand coming in. I was only about three, four years old. And I recall they had people who worked in their house. They also were from Africa, but later on settled in Goa. So they used to tell me when I grew up, you're the same child who's come, who used to come and entertain us. I said, <laughs> how? Very, very uh, sort of displaying your musical talent, singing for them, entertaining. Really? For, yeah. So and, you were very social? Yes. And too, too social engaging. At times. <laughs> um, you told me on the phone mm -hmm. once when we were preparing for this interview, you said you were very um, self-disciplined. Uh, you never got punished. You cannot remember I can't, ever being I can't remember any That's very time unusual. when well, I was punished. Parents, you know it is. No. I think you know why also. I was born 
it's a chronological stage. Yeah. My brothers, I had two brothers, and, and I was number three. So they sort of, you know, this is a little girl with more liberties than the boys. They yeah. were disciplined. Yeah. This one would be allowed just to do what she wants. Everybody was happy. Oh, wow. I entertained everybody. So, but you manage have, you manage your independence well. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, let's talk a little bit about your education mm -hmm. in India. Mm -hmm. uh, you started uh, by going to primary Portuguese school in Goa. Goa, right? Yes. Yeah, but then your parents decided to transfer you to a British Indian school because. My, I had two brothers, as I said, yeah. older brothers, and my parents, especially my dad, my dad said, being in Goa, Goa is a small colony. Yeah. I said the children needed a better education, and it was the British influence yes. that prompted my parents to move to India. It was British yeah. India. So, so by moving to the, the, the British Indian school, mm -hmm. um, there was sort of a promise of a better future for you. Indirectly, I yeah. would say yes. Yeah. 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 Then you went into high school at Mount Carmel Convent. Mm -hmm. uh, what, this was a religious institution? Mm, you see, if you've got to know the history of how religion started, in Goa, yeah. St. Francis Xavier yeah. brought, you know, during the 16th century, yes. Yes. brought Christianity to India. Yeah. And his body remains are still in Goa. Yeah. So Catholicism became one of those religions where many of us yeah. converted. Now, ah. I don't remember conversion, but mostly going to our origins, yeah. We perhaps were Hindus. Yeah, and, and this is where you started learning English in a serious way, right? Mm. In high school? Later on, yes, okay. in high school. Uh, now, what kinds of things did you enjoy doing in school? I know you were big in sports. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, but before that, but before since that? we moved to India, I was a person, like you would call it here, in, you know, learning a new language. Mm -hmm. And I think somehow I pick up languages very fast. Uh -huh. So in Goa, we were landlords, probably people working on our farms. And so we were not connected except with people who were serving us. We had people yeah. uh, living on our properties and each person who worked on our properties was given a certain piece of land. Yeah. They could build a little house as far as they worked for mm -hmm. the family, the products, the farm and yeah. everything. So growing up at that age, we were known as the kids of the landlord, you know, how yeah. you treat them well. Yeah, but you were saying that you enjoyed languages. Yes. And what other activities did you do while in high school? Well, you that, gotta, you that, gotta tell me about the sport. So after I got to India to high school, I excelled in sports. I was the head girl of the school. I had about five awards, I don't, don't even recall. What got you interested in sports? Can you tell me? I think primarily I, I'm one of those who likes something very sort of physical and when I went to university, suddenly that part of my life is when I started improving, not improving, realizing that there is an outer world where I can participate, teamwork. That's the element that made me okay. teamwork. And first year, I stand for election. I don't even know the university culture. There was something else ingrained in me. Yeah. I get into it. Yeah. Then I sort of try to outbeat myself. 
pray and really it's not because I want to show what I'm doing but there's something in me that the drive drives me mm-hmm. to do things. So when I went to university, new world. Yeah, and you did the, you did quite, uh, you get, you, and uh, you did the quite involved, uh, let me, let me say it again, we'll change it in editing. And um, you certainly got quite involved in sports, and then you went on to university, and you got a degree in teaching. You went on uh, to teach high school and the university yes. uh, in the city of Pune. Yes. So what did you teach there? So I completed my bachelor's. Yeah. I uh, completed my teaching degree as well. And then I started teaching high school. What did you teach? I taught uh, languages. Of course. <laughs> no Portuguese. I also had done French, huh? a little of French. Mm-hmm. I got so interested in history. Huh? Till today, I can tell people about Egypt. Yeah. History of Egypt yeah. is amazing. It is amazing. And I started and I had a professor who was wonderful. His name was Choksi. Choksi was an Iranian, I think. Yeah. But his delivery captured mm-hmm. all the students. We, we, and he sort of got us and me especially emotionally involved in history of yeah. Egypt. Even now, I look. I went to Egypt, by the way. Yeah. Just to to experience what Choksi had taught me at university. Now, in 1962, mm. something happened in your life. You made quite a turn. You went to Uganda to attend your brother's wedding. Yes. Yeah. And while you were there, you got to know a gentleman to whom you married. Right? I was in India first. From India I went to Uganda for my brother's wedding. That's right. Then started, got a job. I've got jobs without even going yeah. for an interview. Yeah. My and brother you, came in. You stayed in Uganda for 10 years. 10 years. What did you exactly do in Uganda? I taught high school. Oh, so you At continued. Kololo Secondary School. You yeah. continued to teach. Yes. Okay. And, and just out of interest, I've uh, when I was in Uganda, my brother worked for the Ministry of Education, yeah. and I got a job without okay. even uh, applying. That's why I find there is the no connection where I go for an interview. This is just sailing along from one to another. In 1971, mm-hmm. you immigrated to Canada with your husband. What was the reason? Because of the... What was that my husband said? They're killing us, any, I mean, killing their own type. They will kill us next. And there was a lot of social upheaval in Uganda, right? At that time, it's yeah. just starting, you see. Yeah. And that's what prompted my husband said, we've got to leave, we've got to leave. And I said, where are we going? He always had Canada. He said, we're going to Canada. Did you know much about Canada? Not much. (laughs) I only knew about the Tundra region (laughs) in geography, cold country and stuff, and I was teaching geography. You come to Canada. Mm -hmm. You're here. Mm -hmm. All immigrants face certain challenges. Some people don't like the climate. Some people don't appreciate the culture. In a chat that we had Mm -hmm. uh, on the phone Mm -hmm. about your coming to Canada, you revealed to me that one of the big challenges that you had here in this country was uh, one of discrimination. Absolutely. Can you tell me um, uh, how you felt discriminated? Uh, I'll give you an example. I had a bachelor's, I had bachelor in education, bachelor in economics, anthropology, sociology, and come to Canada, yeah. they tell me, you're high school. I thought it was an, in, it was an insult to my intelligence. Uh-huh. And came here, I can give you examples how I was marginalized by Canada. 
Really? When I went to work, no, when I went to, it was called at that time, I think, what did they call it? When they, when you go in, come to a new country, they looked at my credentials at U of T, and they said, you're grade 12. I said to myself, I didn't question them, but I am an athlete, a fighter, never give up. So your 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 um, qualifications yes. were I had ignored. a bachelor. They were ignored. Absolutely, that's what Canada did. Marginalized me. But you didn't get discouraged. Oh no, I punch. I punch. I have here mm -hmm. uh, and their education in North America. You went to York University. You got a bachelor of arts. But I had a bachelor already. Yeah, but you you this went back to the university here. Country, yeah. Yeah, uh, you went to Niagara University mm -hmm. in New York for a master's in yes. education. Yes. And you also took languages, uh, or you were involved in the, uh, English, Portuguese, uh, Konkani, uh, Hindi, Urdu, and Punjabi. I could speak all those languages. So you, what you did was you you persisted, uh, mm -hmm. in spite of this uh, discrimination. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, you became a, um, a teacher with the Peel Board of Education. You were three years as a consultant for race relations in the area of program development. You did a lot of work for, for the Peel uh, Board, haven't you? I ran conventions, conferences. For teachers, teaching yeah. teachers, even till today, I want to go to the director. See, you, if you have been reading the newspapers, the media, yeah. there's a lot of racism right now yeah. in Canada, in Peel, and I was the consultant. Yeah. What I did was, I, start, I have these ideas in my head. When I got to be a consultant for race relations, I developed programs to teach Teacher, teachers, That's right. how to identify biases in literature. Yeah. Till today, our students in Mississauga and all over, and people who are teaching, do not teach about biases in literature. After retiring from being a teacher, you started your own private, private practice, practice as a family mediator. Yes. What made you change from teaching to this kind of work? Now, I did my master's, a course on mediation too. Ah, okay. And then when I got my master's from the Niagara University, and I had retired, and Marianne was the one, and I met somebody here, no, I uh, got the director who is Peel Family Mediation. She was, we were advertising or telling people, when you have problems in your family, go to mediation. Now, this person, Antoinette Clark, who's still in, in, at the Peel Courthouse, she said to me, and I had just retired, finished my master's, she said, why don't you join? And I did my courses, yeah. on mediation in Niagara Falls. So having done that, here comes Antoinette and says, come on, help me. Let's tell people about mediation yeah. being the right thing instead of going to court. You can mediate this. So for you, it was a natural transition. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you know, I meet, I always say, I meet angels along my way who take me somewhere. And Antoinette, that's where, because of COVID, I still do mediation. I'm an accredited oh, family you. mediator. You, um, you uh, worked uh, a lot with couples preparing for divorce proceedings. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And uh, that must have been an interesting experience for you. Oh, oh, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. And writing the document for the lawyers because as a mediator, you've got to write your document. Yeah. And I must have done, I was just looking at at least 800 cases 
Wow. At the courthouse, because, yeah. because I could not sign my pa- the, the yeah. document yeah. because it has to be a legal document. So then it goes into the lawyers who review what I have done. Mm-hmm. And, and about three or four years ago, I thought um, this process takes time. And then uh, I, did, I still am prepared to go into mediation. Mm-hmm. I mean, not mediation, but telling, I, used to, I love these sessions, telling people how mediation is a better alternative than going through the lawyers where you have. Right on. And even now I will go and do <laughs> that. <laughs> Very good. Now, I want to turn the page yes. to talk about your remarkable involvement in your community, in the Goan community. Let me just read a couple of things here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I understand that your volunteer work has, has um, gone over for 47 years. No problem. I'm yeah. And you've created great impact. I've spoken to people that oh, know really? you. Yeah. yeah. Now, in 82, uh, you became the first female president of the Goan Overseas Association. You broke a glass ceiling. Glass ceiling, yeah. 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 Um, during your tenure, the uh, Goan um, Overseas Association attained status as a charitable organization. Yes. This was really an important step yes. in the organization. Yes. Yeah. But you see, one thing I do, I think because I'm a woman, yeah. I always look for males who are established, knowledgeable, and go-getters. Because as a woman, number one, I had to prove that I'm competent. And, and, you, and you have. And <laughs> I would pick people on my executive, vice president. Vice President, and an accountant. Yeah, so you were telling me that you had a great team. Oh, I picked them. And you picked them. I, I, because yeah. I see my, my weaknesses, and yeah. I see your strengths, and I look yeah. for people who have strength, yeah. and mostly males, because I'm looked at the first female president. <laughs> okay. And you're a daring woman. You're a daring oh. woman. Now, as president, I understand that one of your biggest accomplishments was uh, initiating, designing, and executing the largest international Goan convention. And this was in 1988. That's right. Yeah. Now, one of the outcomes of of this convention was the formation of the International Goan Organization in 1989, which was a year after the convention. Yes. Uh, And... Uh, again, this was a big step uh, in, in, in the evolution of the community, right? Yes. I also want to talk a little bit about uh, not just the, this Goan uh, organization, but you've been a member of uh, the Multicultural History Society of Ontario yes. for over 20 years. Yes. A principal for International Language School Peel Board Continuing Education for six years. You assisted refugees from Uganda oh, to assimilate yes. into Canada. You know what happened? We had moved to Canada just 10 months prior to all these refugees coming in. Yeah. I get a phone call to say, Amin has thrown us out. We were 10 months living in an apartment. Yes. I had a brother in Uganda with his three daughters and yeah. his wife also. They came as refugees. And I got involved with Lady Eaton, who opened a warehouse in Toronto, yeah. right at the bridge of uh, Lakeshore. You helped and find accommodation to yes. something like oh, 20 refugee I don't know families. How many, how many. Wow. <laughs> but you see, it's not me, it's people who believe. Well, yeah. And you people. surround yourself with the right people now. I don't know. Your interest in sports yes. also led you to become the founder 
of the first junior Goan hockey team. Bravo! One of them is right there. <laughs> That's your son. My is, son is back there watching <laughs> us. Um, you were the founder, member, and first secretary of the Goan theatrical group. Yes. President of West End Seniors yes. and volunteer at the Para Olympics. You have been a busy oh, lady. Yes. Uh, on top of this, you you've, you're also an author. You're an author. You uh, in '88. You wrote a book entitled Goa Continuity and Chain. Yes, supported by the then University of yeah, Toronto. And then in yeah. 2000, you profiled the contributions of Goans to Canadian society in a publication called Canada at the Millennium at Transcultural Society. Oh, and yeah. in 2002, <laughs> you wrote um, Uganda South Asians Exodus. So. Yeah, you you uh, was. Um, you've been involved with the, the with Uganda quite a bit now, especially refugees. Especially refugees. Yeah, I found seventeen apartments yeah. for them. Let, let me tell you, let me quote something I read about you. It's been said that you paved the way for other females in the Goan community. And then that you have supported and mentored many individuals in their pursuit of public service. You're a mentor. This is what people say about you. What do you say about you? What do you think your impact has been on the Goan community? And don't be modest, please. <laughs> I, I really can't say. Because, I, I, you know, it's a view that others have about me. When I, when <laughs> I talk about it, I, I feel this, that the community has great, those who know, have an appreciation for yeah. what I've done for yeah. the community. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Uh, I look at it, I mean, from childhood, yeah. I was always involved in helping. I actually saved a little girl. I didn't. I don't think I ever recorded there when I was about 16 years old. I was a girl guide, uh -huh. and in Pune, uh, there was a, a, a there's a little canal where the water runs through here. Yeah. And I was with the guide patrol. I was a leader of the guide rose patrol. So, the whole patrol, the leader, everybody walking there, and there was a little opening like this, just this much. And I was here. And in this opening, it's a canal that opens. I saw a child fall. Oh. Right there. I didn't even stop to think. I was here on land. The child was there. I just put my hand out, caught her by the heel, and took her out. Mm -hmm. And then she thought, and then the parents looked around and they said, thank you. <laughs> it's but you. It's, it's you. It's me. There's something it's in you. me that you. just uh, reacts very fast. And maybe saving that little girl summarizes you. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. because it takes, takes a little bit of courage to do these things. But you don't think uh, at that time. Passion. And compassion. Yeah. yeah. Now, it seems that <laughs> wherever you go, you get an award for your tireless work. <laughs> Let me just read, and I'm sure this is not a complete list, a gold medal um, from a Kolomo secondary school in Uganda yeah. for contribution to the school. Then you have the Pune University gold medal for, camp for, for captaining a winning team for three executive University consecutive team. years. Uh, this is in India, right? Yes, university. Yeah. That's uh, for... All India University Hockey yes. Championships, yes. Ontario Volunteer Award, 20 years of volunteer service, Ontario Volunteer Award, the second one, uh, 15 years of volunteer service, Radio Mango Award, 2018. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to talk to you about your most recent 
and I think we have a picture up there where you're holding it, <laughs> uh, at the inaugural opening of the Goan Community Center, you received a special award. Yes. I think they sent you the photograph. You did. Well, the my photograph husband. is over there. And I have a photograph yes, of it. the award, which we are showing at this very moment. How do you feel receiving this award? This is, this is an important award, is it not? One of the awards. <laughs> no, I, how did you, how did you feel at that moment? In a way, surprised. Really? Yeah. You were not expecting? No. Why would I After expect? you, all you've done for the Goan community, you were not expecting, yeah? <laughs> I've had <laughs> before a recognition. Yeah. So I wasn't, wasn't expecting. Yeah. They might have just named me as a past president, but yeah. I did not know that they yeah. had a award. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, you spoke of your son who's here. You have a daughter in England, yes, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. She's arriving tomorrow. And your, your husband sadly passed away in 2011. Mm, mm. Yeah. Do you have any grandchildren? Six. Six? You're a blessed woman. Very much so. Yeah. Sean has four. Yeah. And my daughter has two. Yeah. And uh, I'm very proud of all of them. With, with such a busy life you've had, um, have you taken time for yourself? Uh, hobbies? I think you spoke to me about hot air ballooning. Yes, I went on a hot air balloon. For real? So, <laughs> hot air ballooning, yes. flying. Yes. You've also told me about gardening, yes. uh, sewing, yes. um, pole walking with a group of friends. Is this uh, no. your latest uh, I, activity? I, I am registered. Now, I came back from Goa a year and a half ago, and I used to do pole walking with a group. Yes. I have a neighbor who got me involved with pole We're walking. We're talking about a group here, right? For, yeah. In, in. So I went to go, I came back, and I still pole walk with my neighbor who got me involved. Yeah. We, uh, and then we have also booked Mississauga, you know, I'm a member of the city of Miss Agar for all these activities. Yes. I do courses. I'm on now at present. Uh, I think today is my class Tuesday. Uh, I have been bone strength because I had a fall after I came from Goa, fell flat. My oh. neighbor came to see me, missed the doorstep, flat like a pancake. Oh. Uh, and then but you've recovered. I have a brace. I didn't yeah. put it on today. But ah. then I have a brace because I played field hockey, got hurt. Yeah. There were no shin, shin pads at that time. So I have, I go pole walking with a group. Then I registered for a fitness with the city. I go there once a week. I uh, pole walk once a week. Plus, I do, I, when I had a fall, I have a tear in my biceps yeah. here. And but you keep I active, had, eh? Oh, still very active. Okay, this is good. Uh, it's good news. I will, I'm I, only 80, I, for, as I say. I'm, I know people ask me, how old are you? And no, I'm say, not going to ask no, you. No, I'm going to tell you. You're 35. Anyway, that's your perception. <laughs> I'll to that. I'm 85, not out. Congratulations. Like, like a cricket score, I tell them. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. And thank may you. you be active for many, many years. Not too many. And I want to <laughs> thank you for sharing your remarkable life with me. And we want to thank our audience for being with us. Till next time, thank you.